Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be painting the sailboat in the harbor right at sunset and I'm going to be walking you through techniques on how to paint reflections on the surface of the water, how color changes with temperature depending on how close or how far it is from the source of light. I will be showing you here swatches with the colors I'll be using. The list is down below in the description if you want to purchase the exact colors I have. But if you just want to match with what you already have in your set, you can just pause this and do that. Um, mine that I prefer to work with transparent shades with the exception of cerulean blue. Um, so try to try to find transparent colors. So let's get started. I have this sketch and you can pause the video, make a quick sketch or um, just make your own sketch according to the reference photo you have. You can apply these techniques to any painting, basically from any reference photo. Yeah, and I'll start here by pre-wetting the entire paper with a flat brush. And for most of the painting, I'm going to be using the same brush, except from the beginning now. So I have a flat synthetic brush. You see the technique is basically top going down and combining the cerulean blue with ultramarine for that color you see there. Now, as I'm getting closer to the horizon line, I'm just dabbing because we will have clouds there. So I want to preserve the white of the paper here and there in that up lower section of the sky. Now, using the same brush I'm dabbing with, combination of that lemon yellow and lizard crimson. You can add more or less here. You can go super dramatic and just make it very saturated, but I, I like um, usually to go with more subtle effects. So I try to combine my colors so they're pretty delicate, not, not too aggressive. This is a close-up so you can see what happens and how wet your paper should be at this stage. It should still be wet but not puddles because the wetter the paper, the more your pigment will spread and you will not, you will not be able to control it very well. Now I'm working on the lower side of the painting and that will be the reflection of the sun in the water. At this stage, my camera just died, but don't worry, I'll walk you through all the steps and we're going to be working a lot on the water, so we're going to get the chance to see all the steps there. Um, so I'm working on that background on the rocks. That is a wall of rocks that protects the harbor and I'm working my way from the exterior towards the sun. Um, at the edges, I'll have more combination of the ultramarine and the resilient crimson. And the more, the closer I get to the sun, the more I add the resilient crimson and yellow. Now you see for the surface of the water, I pre-wetted that area. And I'm going with the combination of ultramarine blue and the Payan's gray. I want a, a little bit of desaturated ultramarine blue and I, you see here I didn't go as dark enough so I pre-wetted again that section and I'm going through again darkening it. At this stage I would put emphasis on making sure you have a space between um, each wave so leave the paper white, just um, don't be afraid to have it look random. You don't have to match anything. Waves are a little unusual, they're irregular sometimes, but you will see that the whole picture is going towards the central focal point, which is the sun. So all the lines kind of go towards the sun, including um, the clouds, including the waves, they all kind of lead towards that point. And I'm 
obviously exaggerating this effect a little bit just so we can get used to it and implement it more in our painting that will make the painting look more dynamic. And here you can go again as dark as you like. The darker you go with the sky, the, the more dramatic the scene will look and it will seem like the sun is barely, just barely at that surface of the rock there, ready to set. Yeah, so you can, you can do a little bit darker here. And I prefer usually to go in staging and do maybe a lighter value and then go a little bit darker and maybe if there's necessary for a third layer. But I prefer to have two layers than one. Third layer, it might be a little bit too much sometimes. Now, once everything is completely dry, I will proceed using the dark combination of ultramarine and Pyon's gray, very dark for those small details as well as the last batch of reflections in the water. So you'll see um, this didn't work out very well because my brush is too big. So I have to switch to a very delicate brush. This is just one opportunity to, to dab it out. I do not recommend you doing that, but I didn't completely wait for the paper to be dry and I should have put some books on it maybe because it got very wavy. So because it was wavy and my brush was pretty big, it didn't look very good. Now using exactly the same brush, I don't want to waste any time so I'm working on the lower section. Again, with the same combination of that ultramarine, a little bit of the um, purple, which I'm creating, inserting some um, alizarin crimson in my mix. Uh, you'll see a close-up right here. I I'm doing that uh, stage of just darkening the sides a little bit even more. Um, again, the darker you go, the more dramatic the effect. I'm I also kept you see the section of the, the glass and the windshield will be reflective so it will catch that orange shade of the sun. Now after I make sure again everything is completely dry and you can still see here you'll see that my paper is not flat um, and that creates a problem so Depending on how steady your hand is, it's usually better to just go really fast and whatever happens, happens. Even if it's not a straight line, then just go with that feel of wind blowing and just an interesting, maybe surrealist scene or more playful. That's no problem. But the important part here with the, those treads, uh, which they're called it's a halyard okay so the halyard is very important and the rest of the ropes um for them to go from dark to light uh where close to the sun they're almost going to be indistinguishable so you don't even have to continue the line there you can go and just stop the line and continue lower um also for an increased dramatic effect um, I will add the yellow towards as close as we go to the sun on these ropes and then add more lizarding crimson as we go further and more of that purple as we go even further and even darker. Now closer to the sun, everything is going to be a little bit more orange, including the people that are on the edge of the rocks um, and the birds. I should mention the birds. I always like to add birds in my painting, but they don't need to be black. They can be just a light purple or in this case, as close to the sun as I go, they will be more orange or even yellow at some point. You see, I'm practicing on my sheet there, um, reflections for the ropes in the water, and that's the last stage. 
carefully, I'm trying to not make a consistent line, but more separate individual pieces, but just create a more realistic look. We can add a little bit more of those just to make it look more interesting. You can add as many as you like. Um, yeah, and this is the final painting. I hope you learned a lot today. You enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see more videos, please subscribe, share, and continue watching my videos. This helps me create more content and I'll make sure I'll be here for you for new tutorials. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.